Mario's first appearance was in the 1981 classic Donkey Kong, Nintendo's first US success, which would go on to spawn several sequels and spin-off titles, including the Super Mario games we all know and love today. In this video, I'm going to recreate the original Donkey Kong for VR. Since I'll be using the Unity game engine, I created a new Unity project. And because this is a VR project, I needed a way to represent the player's view from inside the headset. Luckily, the Unity XR plugin already provides a nice rig with a camera and head tracking. So now we can see inside the VR world. Wait, what's this? Sub subscribe? In Donkey Kong, the player can move across platforms. I created a basic movement script that allows the player to walk slash run. To control these movements, I needed to take controller inputs. And this is done by adding controller objects to the XR rig with their corresponding script functionality and colliders. But the player also needs to avoid barrels by jumping over them. Of course you can always jump in real life, but if you don't want to look like a complete idiot, I added jumping functionality to the movement script. And uh, <laughs> gravity so the player comes back down. Now that the basics were working, I moved on to creating the level. I modeled a section of the platform from the original game, but because VR is 3D, I needed models with depth as well. Since barrels serve as the game's main obstacles, I don't want the platform too wide so the player can easily go around them. But I also don't want the width too small, since the player would fall off easily. So I extruded the platform's width to be the same as the barrels. I then textured and duplicated the models to build out the rest of the level. I recreated the 2D barrels and combined them into a 3D version. This is when I realized the barrels aren't actually circular. I took some artistic liberty and rounded the barrels so that they make more sense in 3D when they roll. Oh yeah, these things need to roll. <laughs> All I needed to do was figure out how far the barrels translate and rotate with each time step. I wrote a barrel animation script that applies these transformations and now they, um, uh, <clears throat> bear roll. In the original game, barrels make their way down in two ways. Rolling off the platforms, or rolling down the ladders, but something needs to tell the barrels which path to take. For pathfinding, I use a basic graph data structure. Nodes represent each section of the level, and the edges represent possible transitions from each node. The original game uses some convoluted assembly wizardry to decide which path to take. Last time I checked, I'm not a wizard, so a simple random number generator will have to do. Once a barrel reaches the oil barrel's collider, their instance will be destroyed. Speaking of colliders, the barrels kill the player on contact. I also added an additional collider underneath the player to count how many barrels the player passes over while jumping. Players get 100 for one barrel and 300 for two or more. Like the barrels, the player dies if they touch the fireball. To make them hop, I scripted an animation cycle that restarts every time they touch the ground. If they reach the end of the platform, they immediately change direction. Otherwise, they switch direction at random. Another large part of the player's movement is climbing ladders. You're probably thinking, how are you supposed to climb when you don't even have hands? Luckily, Oculus provides these wonderful hand models with basic opening and closing animations. I'll just uh, borrow those real quick. Climbing was a bit more complicated than the other movements. The gist of these scripts is when the player moves their hand, their body moves in the negative vector. In other words, when I move my hand down, my body moves upwards and vice versa. Most of you probably remember these guys from Super Smash Bros and all the friendships they've ended over the years. The biggest honor would be for my game to end someone else's friendship, but for now, I'll have to settle with just breaking barrels. So I made the hammer, slapped on a collider and an interactor script, and now the player can grab and swing around the hammer. At first, I made them just disappear. But in the actual game, the barrel turns into this animation thing while a game state freezes. Since we're in VR, I rotated the animation to face the player instead, and I made it so the controller vibrates whenever the hammer hits the barrel. Donkey Kong was the most difficult to model due to his sheer size. I reused the front facing head for the side poses to keep consistent in 3D. For the side poses, I just mirrored the same model. For Pauline, her head is the same across poses, so I only needed to change the torso and legs to create each unique pose. As with the other animated models, a script cycles through each of their poses. With the level now nearly completed, I made some final touches to improve the overall experience. I still wanted a way to see the 2D view, so I added another camera to project a real-time orthographic image onto a plane. I also went ahead and created all the scoreboard and menu models, and I wrote a script to update the display throughout the game. Besides being hit by a barrel or fireball, the player can also lose lives from falling or running out of time. If the player has a life, the level resets, and if the player doesn't, the game will end. The game can also end if the player wins by reaching the top platform where I set up a collider. If the score is a new high score, the player is allowed to enter their initials. Otherwise, they are sent straight to the starting menu where they can start a new game. Before I show off some gameplay, if you have any suggestions for what I should make next, be sure to leave a comment below. And assuming I don't die or become incapacitated, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. Thank you for sticking around, I appreciate it. Until next time, stay in school and don't do drugs kids.